Hey guys, it's Bub here. Exactly two weeks ago, Apple announced macOS 11 Big Sur on stage at WWDC 2020. I've been using this as my daily driver for about a week now, so I have my own thoughts and opinions. We'll also be taking a look at the new features that were introduced with macOS 11 Big Sur. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's start off by taking a look at the macOS Big Sur setup. Immediately you're greeted with new icons, a more round window, and a not so dull gray background like on previous macOS releases. Previously, if you have set up a Mac, you will know that the background is just plain gray and it looks boring. Well now, it is the default macOS 11 wallpaper, so it adds more color to the setup experience. Not only that, but overall everything in the setup has been improved and it looks much nicer. The biggest change going from macOS Catalina to macOS Big Sur is the big change in the UI elements. macOS hasn't seen a change this big in its UI elements since macOS 10.10 Yosemite, which was multiple years ago. Let's take a look at the side of our desktop. There are new hard drive and USB icons which look much better than the ones that were previously on macOS 10.15. They look much nicer, they look more modern, and generally they are just much better. We can now direct our attention to the top of our screen where we can see a more transparent looking top bar. When you click on the elements in the bar, they no longer are attached to the bar like they were in previous macOS versions. They are kind of floating under the bar. And these elements look much better than they did previously being more transparent, and I believe there's a different font included here. The most obvious UI change is most likely the appearance of the new macOS dock. The macOS dock now looks like the iPad OS dock, which necessarily isn't a bad thing. It also has square icons, which I will get to in a second. However, in my opinion, this looks much more modern than the previous macOS dock, as it's not attached to the bottom of the display, and it is rounded. However, for the most part, the dock still acts the same as it did in macOS Catalina. Now we can look at those square icons. Almost every included macOS app has now been changed to have a square icon, which replicates the iOS and iPadOS look. In my opinion, I didn't like this when I first saw it at WWDC, but using it, it doesn't bother me anymore. It's very likely that third-party apps such as Microsoft Edge and Discord will update their app icons to look more like the first-party Apple apps with a square appearance. Instead of having messages pop up at the top of your screen, they now appear in the middle with a sort of blurred background. In my opinion, this looks much better than having it pop up at the top of the screen. It looks much more modern and better. Not only did the drop-down menus from the top bar get updated, but the right-click menus got updated, and they look very similar, if not identical, to the drop-downs at the top of your display. When you click on the time and date in the top right of your display, you now see iOS and iPadOS-like widgets. You can also add widgets very similar to the way that you can on iPadOS and iOS. These widgets are almost identical to the iOS and iPadOS widgets, and they act the same. You can right-click on a widget and change its size to be small and medium. Just like on iOS, the only widgets that are currently available are the first-party Apple ones, however we expect developers to create more third-party widgets. Many applications, for example Finder, have gotten a much needed facelift. They look and feel much better. We can see the transparent bar on the side as well as the new interface. Notes also has the same appearance with the transparent bar on the side, notes in the middle, and your actual note on the right hand side. This looks much better and I think that Microsoft should take some notes for the Windows File Explorer. MacOS 11 also features a ton of new sounds, so I'll let you listen to those. The first sound you'll hear will be the previous sound that was in MacOS Catalina, and then you'll hear the one that is currently in Big Sur. That was just some of the new UI changes, but let's take a look at some of the new features, one of which being the new control center. The control center was taken directly out of iPadOS and iOS and added to the top bar. As you can see, their button is right next to Siri. When we click on it, we can see options to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop, Do Not Disturb, Keyboard Brightness, our AirPlay display, our display brightness, sound, music, and our battery. This is also customizable. 
The addition of the control center makes many people think that we may see a touchscreen Mac in the future, and to be honest, I don't see it. Apple is trying to make Mac OS look more like iPad OS, which is probably why they added the control center. Also to add, control center is very convenient for stuff like Bluetooth, AirDrop, and Do Not Disturb. In system preferences, there is a new battery section where you can see usage history, settings for battery and power adapter, as well as a schedule. We can also see here the horrible looking battery logo, which in my opinion, should be changed. It looks horrible, the text isn't even centered, and it can't decide between an iOS 6 style or an iOS 7 style. The Messages app also received all the updates that the iOS 14 Messages app did, such as pinned conversations, mentions, and inline replies. I cannot show this to you directly, as I am not signing into my Apple ID on macOS Big Sur. However, on the macOS Big Sur preview page, we can see all of these features demoed here. The macOS Apple Maps app also got the same changes that it did on iOS 14, such as guides, cycling routes, charging stops, look around, as well as indoor maps. This is pretty cool, but since when are you going to need indoor maps on a Mac? Apple has added a new feature to the macOS App Store, where developers are required to inform you of what kind of data it's collecting. As we can see here on the demo website, it is shown right here. However, currently, I could not find any apps that display this information. So, we're going to have to wait until developers report that information show it, so it can be shown on the Apple App Store. Safari has got some big improvements, including Privacy Report on the home screen. Privacy Report allows you to see what kind of trackers Safari has blocked. You can now customize your home screen on Safari even more by dragging an image onto the background. This will change the background of Safari to whatever you choose it to. You can also choose the Adjuster button in the bottom to change it to an already preset image that was there for Apple. For example, I'm going to select Abstract 1. When you're on a website, for example 9to5Mac, there is a new button right next to the URL bar. When you click on this, we can see all the trackers that Safari has automatically blocked for us. If we click the I, we can see a full privacy report from this website. This is really convenient as a lot of Mac users want to keep their data private, so Safari now helps you do that on the web. All these changes aren't just for the fun of it. All these changes are to announce a new phase in Apple's Mac lineup. This new phase is switching from Intel-based Macs to Macs that have Apple's own in-house processor inside of them that are ARM processors. Why does Apple do this? Well, the simplest answer to this is control and energy efficiency. On Apple's iPhones, they run so well with 3 to 4 gigabytes of RAM because Apple has full control over the software and the processor because Apple's phones use their own in-house chips, while Macs they can't guarantee that because Intel has power over the chips. However, now with Apple putting their own chips in their Macs, they can optimize power efficiency, hopefully get better thermals inside of these machines, as well as make sure the Mac experience is much smoother. Macs with Apple's own ARM processors are expected to ship by the end of 2020. However, there is already a dev kit which runs the same processor as an iPad Pro. It comes with the Apple A12X Bionic chip, as well as 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. Apple felt that this change was so big that it deserved a name change from macOS 10 to macOS 11. This marks a new chapter in the Mac's life where we can now have Apple's own chips on Apple's own software known as macOS 11. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something in the process. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here. I do all kinds of tech videos. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you all in the next one.